Amen. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you, Pastor Adam. I love this church. Hallelujah. How many are thankful for this church? How many are thankful for Harvest? Say amen. amen. And uh, it's good to have a church to go to. It's good to be, you know, to have a good church in town. Praise God, where you could go and fellowship with brothers and sisters. It's good to have not. It's good that it's not illegal. Somebody say amen. I've ministered in the underground church in communist countries, and we've had to have escape. Um, this is, we had to have escape plans and and a way out and and come on churches I've gone to, gone under the cover of darkness and been dropped off a mile away by the taxi because we didn't want them to know where we were going. Waited for the sun to go down and then walked into the church, you know. And I'm glad we're not doing that in Ashtabula this morning. I'm glad we could just come when we want to come and go when we want to go. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. We, we've got a lot to be thankful for. So that was my son, Cohen, and my daughter, Eden, who were ministering this morning, and I just was so blessed by it. Amen. Eden must have stepped out. Huh? She must have went. She, all right. And we've got her fiance, Darren Sally, here this morning. Darren, just wave your hand so everybody, a soon-to-be new member of the clan. So, and uh, Darren's... Darren's mom and Jocelyn and I went to Bible school together, and we didn't even know each other real well. We had nothing to do with bringing these guys together, you know, and, and they st Eden started telling us. First, Cohen was really good friends with Darren and said, oh, yeah, I met this guy, and I think his mom went to school. We're like, when did she come to school? Turned out we went to school together. And uh, His parents are missionaries in France, and they do a lot of work over there, so it's, uh, we're just blessed by uh, having them here with us. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, how many know Jesus is alive? Amen. Amen. Anybody else here this morning? I, other people do. Of course, my wife, Jocelyn. I, you know, those of you, she's with me always, 90% of the time. And Jocelyn's mom, Benita, is also here with us. So the, the whole, whole clan. And I'm thankful that every one of you is here. Uh, Jesus is here. Is there anybody else? Uh, Eden sang that song, where that, that the best thing that's ever happened to me. That's one of my favorite songs. You know, I have a diverse music taste that goes from like, Punk rock to bluegrass, you know, and uh, I, I like that. Uh, I like that song. It's just because it's anointed, you know. Is there anybody else here that says Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to you? Shout Amen and raise your hand. Amen. I mean, is it? Is there anybody else that found that the world doesn't have anything better to offer? Somebody say Amen. Anybody else here this morning that's found that you're not going to get a better deal anywhere else than what you'll get from Jesus? Hallelujah. Anybody else found out that you're not missing out on anything, running with him, praise God, but you were missing out before you found him? Amen? I'm glad to know him this morning. Well, we're going to talk about Jesus this morning. How convenient. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Jeremy Gall, and, and, and Pastor, thank you for that introduction. I love you so much, and we've been ministering here at this church almost right from the beginning of our, our ministry. We launched out in 2003. I think I was my first service here was like 04, and uh, we've been to 28 states and eight countries total, and uh, thank God everywhere we've gone, we found that Jesus is the same, and he's alive. He's still a miracle worker today, amen, and thank God he's here this morning. Everybody say he's here. Turn to your neighbor, say, he's here, neighbor. Say this, say, I'm leaving different. Come on, let's try that again. Say, I'm leaving different. Say, I'm leaving better than the way that I came in because Jesus is here. How many of you believe that, that there's no reason for you to leave the way that you came in? There's no reason for you to leave the same today because not because I'm here, not because my family's here, but because Jesus Christ, amen, who was born of a virgin, who, who walked the shores of Galilee and healed the sick, cleansed the lepers, raised the dead, who died on the cross for us, who was raised by God from the dead, who is seated in heavenly places at God's right hand. He's here today. Amen. amen. Everybody say he's here today. If you have a Bible, let's go to Mark chapter 5, uh, whatever device serves as your Bible. Like I say, you could press buttons, turn pages, unroll papyrus scrolls, whatever gets you to Mark chapter 5, amen? A lot more options now with technology. I still like books. Anybody else here who still likes you know, a, a bound book with pages, <laughs> amen? I know, something about it, something about it. Uh, so Mark chapter 5, uh, Jocelyn and I had breakfast with a good friend of ours a couple days ago, Pastor Michelle 
Jennings, and, and she told me about a message that her dad used to preach out of, out of Mark chapter 5, and, and it just stuck with me since then. I said, man, that, that's, uh, that, that's good. She said, you know, in Mark chapter 5, her dad, this was her dad's favorite chapter, she said, in Mark chapter 5, there's three miracles, and the first is the madman of Gadara. Anybody familiar with that story? And he was a man, today we would have called him mentally ill. I mean, he was demon-possessed, but he, he was doing things. He was cutting himself. He was, couldn't be clothed. He wasn't in his right mind. And, and he, Jesus set him free. Aren't you glad that Jesus could set us free from mental torment? Amen. And, and when Jesus left him, the Bible says he was in his right mind. He was totally whole in his mind. Don't you know that Jesus could make your mind right? Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says he's the prince of peace. And there's, there's torment in, in people's minds today. Thank God we've got a savior. He can save the spirit. He could save us from our sins. He can save us. In our, he could heal us in our physical bodies. And bless God, he can do a miracle in our souls and our minds. Amen. And that's what happened with this man. That was the first miracle. The second, a man named Jairus comes to Jesus and he says, my daughter's at home sick. Come and lay your hands on her and she'll live. And Jesus says, I'll go. And then on the way to Jairus' house, the third miracle happens. And that's a woman who we're going to talk about this morning, who we sang about already this morning. Uh, she heard about Jesus, and she says, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And she touches Jesus' garment. He doesn't even know. Power goes into her. She's made whole in her body, and she's healed of her plague. Amen. And she goes her way. He says, daughter, uh, go, in faith, go, go in peace. Your faith has made you whole. And then they get back to on the way, had continued to Jairus' house. And on the way, a report comes that she's not sick, but she's dead. They, Jesus says, don't fear, only believe. They continue to the house. They get to the house, and Jesus raises this, the daughter from the dead. But I see something here in this chapter, that the first miracle was a man. Do we have any men here this morning? Say amen. The second miracle was a woman. Are there any women here this morning? The third miracle was a child. Are there, any, are there any children here this morning? Yeah, somebody's kids say amen. Any kids here? If you're a man, woman, or child, Jesus has a miracle for you. Amen. Come on now. Is that encouraging anybody? It doesn't matter where you fall in there. Praise God. God loves everybody. And whatever you're facing today, we've got this man who is mentally tormented. The madman of Gadara, that's his name in the Bible, madman, the madman of Gadara. I don't know how much you've got going on. I don't know what kind of medication you're taking. I can tell you right now, just by looking at the room, every one of you is better off than that man. Amen. <laughs> you're better off than he is, and Jesus could help him. If it wasn't too late for him, it's not too late for you either. And then we've got the woman with the issue of blood. She, she's, she's not only sick. But she's got social problems. She, she, can't, you know, she can't be around people because she's got this issue of blood. And it's causing her difficulty. And it's causing her, you know, the, the Levitical law said she would have to cry out, unclean, unclean, and not be around people. And God healed her. The Bible says she was made whole. Everybody say whole. She, didn't, she wasn't just healed in her body. She was made whole. I believe there's other things that took place in her beyond even just the physical, just the issue of blood. Amen. Is this helping anybody? And then the third was a child who had passed and wasn't even alive anymore. Jesus raised her from the dead. And again, just scanning this room, everybody's better off than she was. Amen. We've got some bad cases in Mark chapter 5. Uh, worse, some of them worse than anybody in this room. No matter what you're facing, we've got people in Mark chapter 5 that were facing more difficult things than you, that were in worse circumstances than you're in this morning. Bless God, Jesus walked into their life and turned it all around. Amen? Woman with the issue of blood, she suffered for 12 years, but it wasn't too late. The Jairus' daughter, she had gone, she got so sick that she was dead, but it wasn't too severe. Are you hearing me? The madman of Gadara was so far gone that, that he, couldn't, he couldn't even function in society anymore, but he wasn't, so far, he wasn't too far that Jesus couldn't bring him back. That's the Savior we serve, amen. So it's not too late for you. You're not too far gone, amen. That he can't work a miracle in your life. Say, everybody say, my case, it's not too hard for Jesus. 
So the woman with the issue of blood, Mark chapter 5, verse 25, it says, A woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years and had endured much at the hands of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was not helped at all, but instead had become worse. After hearing about Jesus, everybody say hearing. After hearing about Jesus, she came up in the crowd behind him and touched his cloak, for she had been saying to herself, if I just touch his garments, I will get well. Amen. And immediately the flow of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And immediately Jesus, perceiving in himself that power from him, had gone out, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see, to see the woman who had done this, but the woman, fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be cured of your disease. Hallelujah. That's a good story, isn't it? The Bible's good news. And you know, the, there's, an, there's a scripture that says that God's no respecter of persons. Anybody ever hear that one before? Uh, that's kind of, you know, old English language, no respecter of persons, but that's the King James way of saying God doesn't have favorites. He's not going through the crowd this morning saying you, but not you, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, you know, duck, 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 goose, right? No, that's not what he's doing this morning. Amen. He's looking at the whole crowd. He's looking at everybody here. He's look, John 3, 16 is telling us he's looking at the whole earth. For God so loved the world. And he wants to work, he wants to help you, he wants to move in your life. Everybody say, God loves me. Turn to your neighbor, say, God loves you, neighbor. But the woman with the issue of blood, she heard about him. I preach on this often, man. She heard about him. Everybody say that. Say, she heard about him. I love this because, you know, there's other stories like the, the man at the pool of Bethesda where Jesus walks up and singles him out and chooses him among like a crowd of people. And he says, and, and, and he, when he saw that he was in a condition a long time, he, he chose him and he said, Will, wilt thou be made whole? And, and the man said, I don't have anybody to put me in the water. So Jesus says, you know, heals him anyways, like stops the conversation. But that was a person that out of a crowd, Jesus specifically chose him. But the woman with the issue of blood is the exact inverse of that situation. It is not Jesus picking one person out of a crowd, but it is one person out of a crowd picking Jesus. Are you hearing me? The man at the pool of Bethesda was Jesus picking one man out of a crowd. The woman with the issue of blood was one person out of a crowd picking Jesus. And it's so wonderful because after, G after she touches the hem of his garment, power goes out of Jesus into her. And Jesus doesn't say, you know, he knows. By the Spirit, he knows that power's gone out of him. He senses it. So it's real. It's not just an ethereal thing. Jesus feels power go out of him. It goes into her body, and she feels in her body that she was made whole of her plague. How many of you know that the power of God is real? It's not a fairy tale. It's not a metaphor. It's not just like, a, are, are, you, are you following me? You know, it's real. He felt it go out of his body. It went into her body and it brought real organic results. She had a real problem, a physical problem. She had a bleeding problem, a blood issue. And she felt in her body, she physically felt that she was made whole of her plague. Aren't you glad we've got a real savior? A real savior. And so power goes out of her, excuse me, out of him into her. And, and, and like I said, the, the man at the pool of Bethesda was, was one man in a crowd that Jesus picked out. The woman with the issue of blood was one person in a crowd that chose Jesus. And then so he doesn't even know who it is. Song told the story, you know. He doesn't even, Jesus doesn't even know who it is. He feels power go out of him, but he turns and he looks at this multitude of people. And he says, who was it? Who touched me? Now, that means it could have been anybody in that crowd. Come on now, is this helping you this morning? Because he didn't turn around and say, yay, you know, this, this was the appointed hour and the appointed time for a specific person, for one person, for the woman with the issue of blood. Are you hearing me? 
And it was set before the foundations of the earth were set. This was her special day. This was her special time. God has specially chosen her. No, Jesus looks at a crowd of people. You could have been in that crowd. I could have been in that crowd. He looks at a crowd of people and he says, who was it? Which one of you? Who touched me? Come on, are you getting it? That means that the power, the real power that flowed out of Jesus wasn't just for one person. It was for everybody in that crowd. Everybody say, the power is for me. Say it again. Say, the power is for me. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the power is for you. See, if Jesus was here this morning, and he, was, he is here this morning, amen, <laughs> wherever two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Let me rephrase that. If Jesus was here in his physical body where we could see him this morning, and he walked down that center aisle, and let's say, let's say you know, somebody reached out and touched his garment, and, and he didn't see who it was. And then he turned around and he says, all right, somebody touched me for power went out of me. And then he looked around and he said, who was it? Was it you, Jocelyn? Was it you, Stuart? Was it you, Penelope? Who, who was it? Was it you? you know, he, and he's looking. That means that the power was for everybody in that crowd. Amen. Is this helping you? Hallelujah. And sometimes a miracle will take you by surprise. I've had some of those miracles happen before, you know. Sometimes it'll just fall on you. I just think somebody was praying somewhere, and I'm thanking God for it. There might have been some person in China, some believer in China, praying in tongues, had no idea what they were praying about, but they were praying for me. Anybody believe that there's maybe somebody in China praying in the Spirit, praying for you? Amen. I don't know what God needs to do, but whatever he needs to do, he can do it. Amen. He's able to get it done. And I've had, I've had miracles take me by surprise. I wasn't, I wasn't fighting in faith for it. I wasn't even trying for it. And it just surprised me, you know. Just fell on me, like almost like a ripe cherry from a tree, like they say, you know. And I'm thankful for it. I said, my God, I wasn't even expecting that. Didn't even see that one coming. But then there's been times where, and I think this is the more common situation, <laughs> Where you find yourself in the position of the woman with the issue of blood, where you're, where you're in circumstances and you need a miracle and it hasn't found you yet. Have you ever been there? Yeah, amen. We've all been there. But that, see, now, now what you do in that situation is very important. Just because your miracle hasn't found you doesn't mean that God doesn't want you to have it. Come on now. You could easily miss it. When you're in difficult circumstances, it's easy to misinterpret the heart of God and the plan of God. And, you know, God, why haven't you done something? Thank you, dear. <laughs> Thank you. She's, hallelujah. Thank God for Jocelyn. So she knows the machinery needs a, a lubrication. <laughs> so, <laughs> amen. But uh, I get excited and I forget about all that stuff. So, uh, where were we? So praise God. Uh, it's easy. It's easy in the midst of difficult circumstances to misinterpret the heart of God. Why is this happening? Why, 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 why is he let, a woman with the issue of blood could have done that. woman with the issue of blood could have said, why me? Are you hearing me? God knows I've said why me before. <laughs> and I shouldn't have. Has anybody else been there? Am I the only one that's felt sorry for himself before, you know? Why is this happening to me? Seems like this person, you know, this is all going good for them. It's a trap of the devil, isn't it? What about this person over there, you know? Pastor, you were saying it this morning when you started off, talking about, you know, we have these down days. But if we'll just focus on what God's doing, amen, if we'll just focus on his promises to us, it's amazing how the perspective can change even when your circumstances stay the same. Isn't it amazing how if you just change where you're looking, praise God, all of a sudden things could look better and your circumstances could be exactly what, they, they're not one bit of change yet in them. <laughs> Amen? I don't know what's, you know, that's for somebody, praise God. It's for me if it's not for anybody else. Amen? But now I've been there. Woman with the issue of blood could have done it. Woman with the issue of blood. Why me? Why has this happened to me, you know? No, man. She didn't. She said she heard about Jesus, and she said, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'm, I will be made whole. I'm coming out of it. 
I'm coming out of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not staying here. Amen. She heard about Jesus. That's it. That's, that, that's, how, that's how you and I have encountered him. Amen. He wasn't, you know, he's raised, he's at the right hand of God, even if you had a vision. I mean, even if you had a dream, Jesus' physical body is at the right hand of God. Are you hearing me? He's here with us in spirit and by his spirit, but none of us, in, we encountered him just the way the woman with the issue of blood did. Somebody told us about him. That's so why I love this story, because we're on an equal playing field. Somebody told us about him. And she did something with the message. She said, what, what you say, I, I, you know, I, it's not recorded exactly what was said to her. I wish it was because it was perfect. Amen. <laughs> you know, because it so inspired her that she that she dragged her sick body out into the street and got a miracle and got her life changed. I mean, whoever told her about Jesus did a good job. Amen. But we can conclude some things that she must have heard. She must have heard that he was a healer. And she said, what, you say he's a healer? You say he's healing physical bodies? How many believe he's a healer today? He's healing physical bodies. And then she didn't say, well, I, now come on, I'm preaching to myself here. She didn't say, well, I wish he'd do it for me. I wish she'd choose me. Come on now, is this helping anybody, you know? She said, you know what? Where is he? Where's his next meeting, you know? Where, where, where is he at? I'm going. Come on now. I'm going to touch the hem of his garment, praise God. I'm going to do something. This information that you've given me about this Savior, I'm going to do something with it. You tell me he's a healer, I'm going to make him my healer, praise God. You tell me he's a miracle worker, I'm getting in on it, praise God. You tell me there's nothing too hard for him, you tell me he's helping people that are in situations worse than mine, you tell me he's turning things around, Bless God, I'm not going to be left out. I'm not going to miss out if he wants it for this one, if he wants it for that one. If he's really the Savior of the world, then it's just as much for me as it is for them. Amen. And I will not be denied. Sometimes it falls on you, but sometimes you've got to have an I will not be denied spirit about you. Amen. Hallelujah. Is this helping anybody? I was ministering in Vladimir, Russia. About <laughs> uh, three and a half hours outside of Moscow, little town. It was, uh, I think Vladimir, was it, that, it was illegal to street minister in Vladimir, right? And so we had to go around with little sheets of paper that just had an address on it. Nothing else, just an address of where we were meeting, you know. And you couldn't go out as a group. And like, you know, it wasn't like totally closed, like North Korea, they put you in a camp, but it was like, there was laws in place, you know, ordinances. And you couldn't go out as a group, so, and tell people about something religious. So we went out as a bunch of individuals together. Amen. <laughs> Just kind of walking that fine line there, you know. And uh, we had little, uh, we had little, um, <laughs> we had little pieces of paper with an address on it. That's all we had, nothing on it but an address. And we just told people, hey, you know, stop by this address later on tonight if you're interested in, you know, whatever, God, you know, we've shared some things with them. Uh, we went out in small teams of two and three people. Jocelyn and I actually in our team, this one guy eagerly volunteered. I'll go out on there with him. We found out later he was an FSB agent, turned out a KGB agent, yeah. And he, I, that's why he was so eager to be on our team, you know. <laughs> so, but... Uh, there was a woman, and uh, she was in one of the teams, and she was from a, the church there in Vladimir. And she had had uh, one of her breasts removed because of cancer. And not only did they remove the breast, but they had also cut the pectoral muscles and, and removed so much of the muscles that it was now impossible for her to lift that arm above her shoulder. And I guess they felt that they had, you know, surgically they had to do it. It wasn't a mistake or anything. But she, she couldn't lift her arm physically, not because of pain, not because of stiffness, but she just didn't have the equipment. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like a garage door without the springs. You know, she, didn't, she had no equipment to lift her arm above her shoulder. But she heard that we were having this healing service, and she said, I'm getting my miracle tonight. She told us through an interpreter, you know, before the service. I had no idea what was wrong with her. And, I, and, I, and she said, I'm getting my miracle tonight. 
And we said, well, praise God. You know, I didn't know what she was believing for, probably better, you know, but it shocked me a little bit, you know, and I said, good, you know, amen, he's got it for you, amen, nothing's too hard for him. I had no idea what was wrong with this woman, but I remember her telling us before the service through the interpreter that I'm getting my miracle tonight. So that, I just felt impressed to minister to shoulders. Isn't that amazing how that happens, you know? And four people came forward. One woman had not lifted her arms, different woman, had not lifted her arms above her shoulders for 10 years. And I don't know what it was, you know, arthritis and stiffness and things like that. Hadn't lifted her arms above her shoulders in 10 years. And we prayed for her and instantly she's flapping her arms like a bird, you know, going back to her seat. God healed her. Amen. Instantly. First time in 10 years. That sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? And then uh, there was another, a couple other people in there and they testified. And then this woman, we prayed for her. And just in a moment, she just full range of movement restored to that arm. And she could move it for the first time since she had all those muscles removed. Amen. <laughs> You know, I don't know what God did. I don't know if he put the muscles back in instantly. I don't know if he made it possible for her to move without muscles. I think whatever needed to be done, he could do it. Amen. Hey, whatever needs to be done, he could do it. Praise God. But I know he's up for the challenge. But she, she was like that woman with the issue of blood. And she said, I'm getting my miracle tonight. How many believe that God's up for the challenge? I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know what you're facing in your finances. I don't know what you're facing in your body. I don't know what you're facing in your mind. But I do know this. Our Savior is up for the challenge. Amen. And I don't know what they told her. But they, told, they must have told her that her case wasn't too hard. You know, I was ministering in uh, North Carolina. And... Uh, this woman was there. I came up to her, and we were praying for people. Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Anybody ever been to Kings Mountain? Small town. Did Jocelyn? <laughs> yeah, Jocelyn. Eden, you could raise your hand. You were, you've been to Kings Mountain, yeah. Cohen, you weren't born yet. So uh, <laughs> we ministered in Kings Mountain, and this woman tells me we're praying for people in the healing line. She says, the Lord told she had uh, partial blindness in one of her eyes, and, and uh you know, there was blind spots, and it was getting worse, and, and she said, the Lord told me last night that he was going to heal me, and I don't, I don't always take, <laughs> I don't always take well to that, you know, I, I, whenever somebody says something like that, I'm like, well, the Lord told you in the word, he didn't need to tell you, you know, that he told you you were healed, you know, so I was like, well, whatever, you know, and, but man, I prayed for, so I'm, not, I'm saying it's not me, you know, I'm not like, yes, I believe because of your, you know, the Lord told you last night or your dream she had or whatever. And I'm still playing ball though. I'm like, praise God, in the name of Jesus, be healed. I go on to the next, I'm like laying hands on the next person and she starts screaming. I can see, I can see, I can see, praise God. And all the blindness left, praise God. That's our savior, isn't it? Hallelujah. He's still a savior today, amen. Well, it took some kind of power to make that, arm, that woman's arm move in Russia. It took some kind of power to cause that woman to see in Kings Mountain, North Carolina. It's the same power that flowed out of Jesus and flowed into that woman with the issue of blood. And we are not without that power in Ashtabula, Ohio in August of 2024. Our Savior, power has not stopped flowing from our Savior. Power has not stopped flowing from the resurrection. If it's ever flowed before, it's flowing today. If it's ever been for anybody, it's for you, praise God. That's the kind of Savior that we serve. Is this helping you? I share a couple more stories here. Is that all right? Minister in the same place. Uh, <laughs> Kings Mountain, North Carolina, but a different time. 15-year-old boy comes up in the healing line. He had pole vaulted off of the roof of his parents' house. Aren't you glad that God heals us even when we do stupid things? Amen. I mean, I love this story. It's so good, man. I mean, I you know... The world works on the you get what you deserve system, doesn't it? But the kingdom of God does not work on a get what you deserve system. You can get yourself into a financial mess and, you, and God works so you don't get what you deserve. You could smoke every day of your life and get lung cancer and our Savior will heal you, amen. You could go out and live some kind of horrible life and have the consequences of it. But I'm telling you, the message of the cross is he took the punishment that we were supposed to have so we wouldn't have to take it, amen. He took what we, what, what, 
He took what we deserved. He didn't deserve that cross. He didn't deserve the nails. He didn't deserve the whip. That was the punishment for our stupid mistakes. Come on, is this helping you this morning? I know I'm preaching myself happy, amen. <laughs> this young boy, 15 years old, he pulls off, off the roof of his parents' house and he loses 70% of the movement in his ankle. And they said he might get back like 10 more percent, but it'll never be right. You know, never be right again. Messed it all up. He, limp, he limps up to the healing line, you know. Pole vaulted off the roof, you know. Ah, oh, man, could you imagine just the, like the, the weight that he would have carried with that for the rest of his life, thinking how stupid was it? You know, 45, 55 years old. He's lost over 50% of the movement in his ankle because of a mistake when he was 15, you know. And here he is, and he limps up to the line. We pray for him in Jesus' name. Everybody say Jesus' name. I don't know how. I don't know what happened. But in a moment, he just starts moving that ankle. He had full range of movement restored to that ankle. He started running up and down the aisles. Amen. Amen. We've seen it so many times. He limped up to the front, and he ran away. Hallelujah. He went, he went jumping and leaping and praising God. That sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? That sounds like the power that flows from the resurrection. That sounds like a Bible story, praise God. But here's the thing. Bible stories don't just happen in the Bible. Bible stories are still happening today because the Jesus of the Bible is still healing now just like he always has. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. Turn to your neighbor say, this is good, neighbor. <laughs> Turn to your other neighbor say, this guy's a good preacher. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Having a little fun. <laughs> if I am, it's because of him. He gets all the glory. Amen. It's only because of him. Amen. Hallelujah. Now the power's still flowing. This is not a philosophy. This is not one religion among many. Are you hearing me? This is not one point of view. This is not an opinion, bless God. There is a Jesus. He really, did heal the, he really did heal this woman in the book of Mark. There really was power that flowed out of him and went into her body. And she, was, and she really was made whole of her plague. And there's still stuff happening like that right now today. Right now today, August, he's still doing the same thing that he's always done. There's no shadow of turning with him. He's, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I think I'm a little extra stirred up. I, I preached in Pakistan yesterday. Can you believe that? Pakistan yesterday. Say, so how do you Zoom meeting? <laughs> in, uh, over, uh, over the internet. Preached all over Pakistan. Did a crusade in Pakistan, you know, and then here preaching in Ashtabula this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Couldn't even have made the plane trip yet if, it was, if I was there physically, you know. But he's a miracle worker. Everybody say he's a miracle worker. Take comfort, brothers and sisters. This is not some, this is not some, just this is my view. Well, I think God's like this. Are you hearing me, you know? This kind of postmodern thing where we create God. I think God's like this. I think this is what he's like. I think this is what she's like. I think that there, you know, there's many gods. I think whatever, like God's our creation. God's not our creation. We're God's creation, <laughs> And it's real. It's, as, it's more real than the seat that you're sitting on. Your Savior is more real than the seat that you're sitting on this morning. And you could count on him more than that seat, too. You could rely on him, and you could trust his word, praise God. Amen. I hope I'm not too excited for you all. A couple more stories, and then we're going to pray. <laughs> we're going to pray for people. Are you glad you came? Amen. He's a miracle worker. Thank you, Jesus. Jocelyn, give me a story. What's a story we should share? What you thinking? Yeah, all right. So I, I worked with an, another evangelist supernaturally. When, uh, don't have time to tell the whole story, but we worked with another evangelist for a couple years before we started traveling named David Horton. Uh, before we started traveling ourselves. And uh, he had come from a Pentecostal family, Church of God, and, and went back, I don't, like, six generations, you know, I mean, like, to Azusa Street. We talked back to Azusa Street this morning, like, the 06, 1906. His mom, his great-grandmother 
was part of a Pentecostal church that was founded in Georgia, you know. So, I mean, he's got a, a lot of years of Pentecost in his family, right? So his mom, Jerry Horton, still alive today, I think she's 95. Uh, they were out pastoring in New Mexico. And uh, one of the stories in Mark 6 was this Jairus' daughter was raised from the dead. And, and they were pastoring out in New Mexico, and, and, and David had, was eight years old, and he had come in from playing outside, and he saw his dad just laying on the living room floor, but fully clothed. And he said, my dad wasn't the kind of guy who would just lay down in the middle of the day and take a nap in the middle of the, I knew something was wrong. And he examined, he examined his dad as best as he could as an eight-year-old. You know, I don't know if he shook him or what he did, but, you know, he did something to investigate as much as an eight-year-old could, and. He said he thought his dad was dead, you know, as much as he could tell. And this was incredible. He said, in my family, we didn't do panic. Now, his mom had been healed of cancer. I don't have time to tell the whole story, but I can tell you she was healed of cancer. They told her she would die at like 24 years of age. God healed her, but they told her she could never have a child. She lived in the state of Alabama, and, and, and she had had a, a, a hysterectomy through, with all the stuff she battled with cancer. So they said, you cannot carry a child. If you become pregnant somehow, you and the child will die. She knew that in the state of Alabama, this was 1957, in the state of Alabama, that 56, 57, in the state of Alabama at that time, after six months of pregnancy, it was illegal to have an abortion for any reason. So she waited six months. Are you hearing me? And she goes to the doctor. And she says, uh, well, I'm pregnant. And the doctor said, we, she, she said, he said, you're crazy. You're going to die. This child's going to die. You shouldn't have done this. I told you not to do this. She said, yeah, but you also told me I'd die of cancer. But here I am. And that, that child she was born with, that she carried, that, that was my mentor, David Horton, the evangelist that I worked with. Somebody say amen. That's a Pentecostal story right there. So, so uh Anyhow, so then fast forward, David's eight years old, they're, they're in, in, in New Mexico, and uh, he goes in, finds his dad like that, calls his mom in the kitchen, she says, he says, mom, I think dad's dead, and she says, all right, I'll be in in a minute, she, <laughs> I'm telling you, this is God's truth, man, she's got an apron on, she comes in, she's wiping her hands, and she goes, and, and she examines him, and, and she says, yeah, it looks like he's dead. And, I mean, she's calm as can be. He said, we didn't do panic in our family. How many know we all ought to not do panic in our families? Amen. Hallelujah. Why panic when the God of heaven and the God is on your side? Amen. So she lifts up his head, puts his head against her chest, and she says, Doc Horton, wherever you are, his name was Doc. Doc Horton, wherever you are, come back in Jesus' name. Nothing happens. Her son David's watching at this time. He's just watching, you know, careful, obviously. He says, don't worry, he'll be back. I asked her later, I asked, I asked, I said, Sister Horton, what were you thinking when you were praying for Doc when you were, and you were holding his head against you? She says, I was thinking, you're not going to leave me here with these kids in the middle of the desert in New Mexico. She said, that's what I was thinking. Hey, whatever it takes, amen. And she's, she's got his head first time. She says, Doc Horton, wherever you are, come back. Second time, she says, she says Doc Horton, wherever you are, come back in Jesus' name. And he starts... <coughs> starts coughing and he comes back amen they get dressed go to the doctor doctor examines him he says yeah from what you know you've said and just from the examination it kind of sounds like he, he must have had a heart attack he said but who ministered to him before you came here and, and, and they said nobody she says I'm a minister you know and we're ministers I prayed for him he said oh you're one of those yeah thank God she's one of those Hallelujah. I want to be one of those. Amen. I would rather be one of those than anything else this world has to offer. Praise God. Is there anybody else here this morning that says, God, let me be one of those. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I don't There ain't nothing. I, thank God we don't have to, but there's nothing I wouldn't trade to be one of those. Amen. But he says, because before he says there must have been, it must have been um, like nitroglycerin or something. He said because there's chemicals in his bloodstream that somebody must have administered to him before he came here, you know. Well, God could put chemicals in a bloodstream, amen? If he could rain manna from heaven, he could put chemicals in a bloodstream, praise God. Hallelujah. How many of you like miracle stories? Amen. Yeah. I mean, that's Jesus, isn't it? That's our Savior. Amen. It's not just a philosophy, praise God. It's real. Everybody say it's real. It's real. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. Maybe one more, and then we're going to close. I know, it's about my third closing. We, we, you still with me? Say amen if you're still with me. I'm going to use the old preacher joke. Who will give me five more minutes? Raise your hand. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. <laughs> All right. It never gets old, man. It's still funny, you know. <laughs> one more story, Jocelyn, one more. What's that? Candy. Hallelujah. My kids remember candy. I'm ministering in Des Moines, Iowa on a Sunday night, and a, and a woman is there who had had a massive stroke four years before that night. And she could not drive. She could not see well, she was, you know, legally blind. She shuffled to the front of the church. Somebody had to help her come up because there was so much nerve damage and stroke damage in her body. Prayed for her that night, Sunday night. And as we prayed for her in Jesus' name, she, st she felt a little better. Everybody say a little better. And by that, I mean she, she said she felt like her mind was kind of starting to come clear. And she was wrecking, and she could see a little better. And she's picking out people on the front row and she's like calling I, this is so and so this is so and so and she's able to see you know she couldn't see when she came up before and she says I feel like I could move my legs a little better I said God's working a miracle in your life can you come back tomorrow night I believe there's going to be more to the testimony she says well I can't drive I said well who who would bring her and somebody volunteers they said I'll bring her tonight she she walks in so that's Sunday she walks in the Sunday night we pray for her. she walks in Monday night to the service and she's totally whole amen she she walks in normal she's got glasses on now she could see she could talk normally it, it, it's the same people we saw my kids remember we saw her the night before you're seeing her you saw her on Sunday you see her walk in Monday even gets better than that thank God she had a doctor's appointment scheduled Monday morning her doctor said, uh, was so excited. He was a believer, Dr. Palmer, still remember his name. He, the doctor called her pastor. He was so excited about what happened, amen. You know if your doctor's calling your pastor, there's something going on. It's not just an everyday thing, you know, it's amen. And, and, and she, she went, they tested her that day. She went from 95% nerve damage to less than 1% to 0. .0005. She was scheduled for surgery on her digestive system they canceled the surgery amen she walked in and she was normal she walked in and she was whole that's jesus everybody say that's jesus that's it we'll close with that uh how many believe he's exactly like god described him on the pages of this book how many how many believe that he still heals the sick raises the dead cleanses the leper makes the mad people make makes people that we, they would call madmen mad people he still makes them whole and in their right mind how many of you believe in the jesus of the gospels you can do like the woman with the issue of blood you can say i, I will be made whole if she could say that you could say that if she could say that i could say that i don't care if it's physical if it's in your body i don't care if it's mental my dad was set free from PTSD. He was in Vietnam. Heard another story of a guy who served in Afghanistan. He came home, and, and he was just messed up with PTSD, man. And he just, he just went out. He would go out in the woods every day and just take his Bible with him and just read the word. And he said, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. I'm not going to live like this. And over a period of time, he was totally set free, and his mind was made whole. Amen. Not tormented anymore. Just like the madman of Gadara. We have a Savior. Everybody say, we have a Savior. Say, I have a savior. The world makes fun of that word save. They have no idea. He's a savior. He's not an idea. My God, he's not a political movement. Are you hearing me? There was a Jesus long before there was a United States. There'll be a Jesus long after there's a United States. It's not, it's not a political movement. Amen. Are you hearing me? It's ancient. It's older than 2,000 years. Thousands and thousands of years ago, there was prophets speaking about this Savior. It's as old as the human story. People say, well, this, this religion predates Christianity. This, that religion predates... No, no religion predates Christianity. Because the, 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 the prophets of old prophesied about the Savior for thousands of years before he came. They said, he's coming. He's coming. Get ready. He's coming. Amen. He's coming back. Amen. But everybody say he's here. I don't know why it's so easy for me to preach to you this morning. I'm sorry I went so long. I feel like I could go another two hours, but we'll close. 
Are, are you still glad you came? Let me ask you again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to pray for you. Stand to your feet if you're able. If it's, more, if it's easier for you to remain seated, you're free to do so. Praise God. But if you're able, go ahead and stand to your feet. Hallelujah. I was praying for people just like this. We're just going to pray for people right in their seats this morning. Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Man, God is here. Presence of God is here. It's here for a reason. Same power that flowed into the woman with the issue of blood. Not a bit different. Not a different kind. Not a watered down 2024 version. But the power that went into the woman with the issue of blood. It's here this morning. Exact same stuff. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's still flowing today. It's here today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had on my heart this morning, just before this service, and we're going to start with this, that, man, this madman of Gadara, there's people, anxiety, depression, PTSD, uh, uh, personality disorders. Uh, they used to call it bipolar. They changed the name all the time, you know. Uh, there's stuff going on, and people are battling with it. I, you know, just because they could name it, just because they could diagnose it, just because they could come up with, well, you need this chemical and you need that chemical, doesn't mean that God can't make it right. And he could give you peace in your mind, amen. The Bible says he's the prince of peace. The punishment, the chastisement that brought you peace was upon him. He was punished and he, he took punishment on himself so you wouldn't have to be tormented and punished in your mind, amen. And that's the first thing we're going to pray for today. You don't need to come forward. You don't need to raise your hand. You don't need to do anything. You just from your heart put yourself in, a, in an attitude of receiving and then you can just say quietly to yourself, I will be made whole. Just say what she said, I will be. I'm coming out of this. I mean, you might have been very comfortable with it. You might have built your life around it. And maybe, and I understand, because sometimes you can't see a way out. But this is what I hope this did today. I hope that through this Holy Ghost and through the preaching of the word that you can see there is a way out. Amen. And Jesus is that way. He's the way out, praise God. Your tomorrows don't have to be like your yesterdays because we have a Savior. I don't care how many of those yesterdays there have been, you know, hundreds, thousands. But thank God your tomorrows don't have to be like your yesterdays. We're going to pray for that first. We're going to pray for just healing in people's souls. One of the most famous passages in the Bible in the book of Psalms says, He restores our soul. He restores my soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, you could all just raise your hands if, you, you know, if you're able. Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, we speak to depression. We speak to PTSD. We speak to unreasonable fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. We stand against these things today. Panic attacks? No. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Not my name, not the name of any church, but in Jesus' name. Devil, you take your hands off of people's minds. You take your hands off of people's souls today. PTSD, go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Go in Jesus' name. And we speak peace to people this morning in the name of Jesus. Peace belongs to them, Father. Jesus bought it for them. It's paid for. We need to realize with these things, it's an issue of justice. Our God is a just God, and it's unjust for a devil to try to put something on you that Jesus bought your freedom from. That's unjust, and our God is a just God. Amen? Hallelujah. Torment. Torment. Go in Jesus' name. Minds be clear. I speak peace to these people. Peaceful sleep in the name of Jesus, that their sleep will not be tormented anymore. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And every person here, if that, if that fits, and, and all of us have had battles in the mind to some degree. Everybody does. But realize you've got authority over it. That whatever the enemy tries to bring you, you guys just did a great study here on Thursday nights on authority. And, and you've got authority over those things. And recognize this, that if you're a Christian, the Bible says you're a new creature. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. And the new creature is not mentally ill. And the new creature is not bound. And the new creature is not oppressed. This stuff might try to come on you, but it's an outside thing. Are you hearing me? 
I'm not, I'm not saying you're not dealing with it. I'm not saying like, la, 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 we're pretending like it's not happening. I'm saying in the core of who you are, that's not who you are. You're free. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are a new creature and the new creature is free. He's, he, he, she, the new creature is not deficient. The, the, the new creature is not broken. The new creature is not incomplete. The new creature is not missing what it needs to live and survive in life. Amen. The new creature is whole. Amen. All right, now I'm going to pray for healing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This power, I, I don't, in the name of Jesus, I did not come to tell stories. Amen. Just to tell stories. I came to tell stories to lead up to this point. Hallelujah. Where you could reach out in faith just like she did. And a very real healing power could flow in your body just like it flowed in hers. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus never sent anybody just to talk. He sent him. He said, wherever you go, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead. Freely you've been given. Freely give. I'm just going to pray for you right in your seat. We're going to take authority over sickness and disease. In Jesus' name. Not my name. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're facing, but I know his name is greater. He has, he's got the name above every other name named. And I'm going to pray and take authority in Jesus' name. And then after that, I just want you to do what you couldn't do. Move your arms. Take a deep breath. Jesus always gave people something to do. He would say, stretch forth your hand, he told the man with the liver, withered hand. Take up your bed and walk, he told the man who was lame. Go show yourself to the priest, which you know, he told the, to the lepers. He just would give them some kind of action. And maybe that action is just praising God and just saying, Lord, I thank you that it's done. Maybe it's taking, like I said, taking that deep breath or moving that joint or whatever. But we're going to command in Jesus' name. And then I just want you to do what you couldn't do before. Just act your faith in some way. Amen? Let's pray. Thank you, God. The God of miracles is here right now. Hallelujah. The Jesus of miracles is here right now. Hallelujah. He's here. And right now in Jesus' name. We take authority over sickness and disease of every kind. Necks, I command you to be loosed. Pain in the neck and going up and down the neck. Go in the name of Jesus. Tumors, go in Jesus' name. Arteries, you be clear in the name of Jesus. Hearts, you, be, you beat normally and you beat perfectly in Jesus' name. Digestive problems, go now in the name of Jesus. Backs, you be whole. Discs, you be lined up. Eyes, you see. Ears, you hear. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus, we command healing and wholeness. Now, in Jesus' name, we take authority over sickness. We take authority over the curse. We take authority over you, devil, in Jesus' name. And we call these people free. Now, right now, in the name of Jesus, do what you couldn't do before. Move that back in Jesus' name. Move that back now in the name of Jesus. Take that deep breath. Move those shoulders. Hallelujah. It just, and let's just, and maybe it's nothing that you could do, but let's just all thank God together out loud. Let's thank him for the answer. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody in this place and thank him. If you're not thanking him for yourself, thank him for somebody else. Amen. Come on and thank him for it. Thank him for it. Thank him for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise God. Come on now. Isn't he good? Hallelujah. Isn't he good? Thank you, Jesus. Now, don't be shy already if there's somebody that says, yeah, something's already different. Raise your hand. Says something's already changed in my body. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, amen. Let's rejoice with her. Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. I believe it. I believe it. Say no more, sister. Say no more. <laughs> Amen. Let's agree with her. No more in Jesus' name. Jesus set us free from that stuff. I believe there'll be other stories. You know, sometimes it's like, well, I don't know unless it's this time and this is happening. You know, when that time comes, expect it to be different. Amen. Somebody else say something's different. I already, saw, I already feel different. Raise your hand so I can see it. Don't be shy. Anybody. Hallelujah. Jesus is here. Praise God. Amen. Well, tell me about it. Amen. Please tell me. Like, even if not now, tell us after the service or something. I believe that we're going to see things in the days to come even. Because I know there's some people you wouldn't even know today. But you're going to get, you know, you'll get a test. Or you'll get, you know, when, oh, it's when I get up in the morning. It's when I go to bed. Let's believe God that it'll be different. Praise God. The woman with the issue of blood, it was different. Hallelujah. He's a miracle worker. Amen.
Hope I didn't go too long. I, man, I can't. Guys, I love you. It was so good to be here with you. One more very, very, very important thing, and we're going to close. The most important thing. I know we're mostly believers here this morning, but I don't know if it's recorded. I don't know if somebody's watching at a different time. But if you don't know this, Jesus, hallelujah, you ought to know him. Is there anybody here who's glad you know him? Say amen. I'm telling you. you, you don't put it off. Today's the day of salvation. Amen. These young ladies here, it's always such a blessing to see how God brought you here. He's got a good plan for your life. Always happy to see you here. Hallelujah. He's got a good plan for everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Good plan. But you see, the thing about the plan of God is he never forced it on anybody. And you had no choice. I had no choice what natural family I was born into. We didn't get a vote. Right, Adam? You know, we didn't get a vote. But, in the, but God in his family, you're not a part of it unless you choose to be. Everybody says, well, we're all the children of God. Yes and no, we're all the creation of God. But you're only his child if you've made a clear decision. to say, God, I, I, Jesus made the way for me and now I receive it. If you've never done that, I want to pray for you this morning. We're going to pray a simple prayer. We're going to pray with you. And I ask you, everybody in this place, just repeat with me out loud and just... If you agree with it in your heart, if you say, yes, I agree with that, pray it right to God, and let's pray together. He'll save you today. He'll make you his child, and you can be a part of his family and never let anybody talk you out of it. Amen? Let's pray together. Everybody say, dear Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again from the dead. I believe you're alive today. I receive what you did for me. You paid the way for me. You paid the price for me. I couldn't do it myself. But you did it for me. And I receive it. I accept you, Jesus. Be my Lord and Savior. Make me a new creature. Forgive me of my sins. I repent of my old life. And I set on a new course today living for you. In Jesus' name.